Well, I don't want to say bye-bye, Miss American Pie, if that pie includes the American dollar. So let me give you another supply-side minute. You know I've been crusading to save the greenback and restore King Dollar. But new health care entitlements opening the door to a government takeover is no way to do it. Not surprisingly, today the dollar fell again and gold jumped again, closing at 1,064. Not good. Kind of smells like the 1970s. Now let's track two ominous headlines in the news today. First, is a global wealth shift out of the dollar and into commodities? Big story there. Second, probably worse, the dollar is losing its reserve status to the yen and the euro. In the second quarter ending June, central banks around the world invested 63% of their new cash reserves into euros and yen. They only put 37% into dollars. It used to be the reverse. As you may know, over the past six months, the dollar has lost 15 percent. Gold has jumped nearly 150 bucks. If this continues, I'll tell you, spiking inflation and interest rates will choke off the bull market in stocks, and they'll do serious damage to the economy, and it could happen fast. Well, how to solve this problem in supply-side terms? Cut tax rates for new growth incentives. Do it across the board. Meanwhile, the Fed should drain cash to remove excess dollars from the financial system, and the Treasury should simultaneously buy dollars in the foreign exchange markets, all right? The Fed should drain cash, take dollars out of circulation, and let the Treasury buy dollars. Meanwhile, Washington should quit its explosive spending and borrowing. Heck, set some statutory limits or even constitutional limits on this. You know... Being the world's reserve currency is a tremendous national asset. We must not squander it. We must stop these self-inflicted wounds that will do great damage to American leadership and prestige globally around the world and to our economy here at home. Not a good story. Huge risk. Joining me now to talk about all this and react, Brian Westbury, first trust advisor, chief economist, and the author of It's Not As Bad As You Think. That, by the way, is due out at the end of the month, and we can't wait for a little optimism. We have Harvard University professor Neil Ferguson. He's the author of The Ascent of Money, A Financial History of the World, which I have read and is a heck of a read. We have Jim LeCamp of Macro Portfolio Advisors. Thank you for all your duty today. Uh, Neil Ferguson, welcome back to the program. It's a delight. And I, I want to ask you, I, I read your cards, you're thinking, you're looking for, what, a 30% drop in the dollar? Well, if you look at the real trade weighted index, it's down, uh, what, 9% from the rally that we saw earlier this year. Uh, that's since March. But that's nothing compared with the kind of declines we've seen in the past when confidence has ebbed away, when, when we saw in the 70s and indeed in the 80s declines of 25, more than 35%. Uh, so I think it's perfectly plausible that the dollar has further to fall, at least 20% in my view, as I said earlier, over a 6 to 12 month time horizon. I think I saw a stat, Neil, not uh, last week or two, but since uh, 2001, more or less, the trade weighted index, the so called DXY that investors play, off something like 65% uh, in the last whatever, eight years. Now, if your scenario was correct and you had that on, that is the dollar's demise as a world reserve currency, is it not? I think that is what is different about this. Uh, back in the 1970s and 1980s, there really uh, wasn't a credible alternative uh, to the dollar. Now, the euro, for all the difficulties of the eurozone, is clearly an alternative reserve currency in terms of, of volumes. And, uh, and I think it's not surprising that central banks are taking these positions because they know which way the dollar is heading and it can only be south. Mm. We saw a rally in the depths of the crisis uh, after the fall of Lehman Brothers, but that was a flight to safety. That, that moment has passed now. And I think we're resuming the downward trend that you referred to earlier, which really goes right back to 2001. All right. Uh, Brian Westbury, you are a huge economic bull, V-shaped right. recovery. Yep. God bless. I, I happen to think it's or a modified V. What are you, about 3, 4, 5 percent in there? Yeah, I think Growth. 4 percent growth okay. plus. Yeah. How does that impact this dollar scenario you heard from Neil Ferguson? And right. do you agree with what Neil is saying about the dollar? Yeah, I, I think that it could be true. It's more like the 70s, not like the 80s. I think during the 80s, it was the Plaza Accord. We came from an overvalued position and then and then fell. First Reagan it's, term, the dollar was up huge. Yeah, Lower tax it, it, rates, it, slaying inflation by was, Volcker, and that, huge. And we got I mean, this the supply side. And the dollar does that a lot. It gets this momentum play and it went way above and then it crashed. 
the 70s, it was just this long-term decline because we had high taxes, big spending, easy money. And Sound we familiar. are. Yeah, that's one of the things that's hurting the dollar. So I could agree that we could go down 20% if the Fed never doesn't change course. But if the Fed starts taking money off, as you said in, in, your, in, your, uh, so in your great comments there, if they start taking money off the table, we won't have that kind of, the do of decline in the dollar. Before I get to Jim LeCamp, I want to get a stock market take and I want to get you. Neil, let me just ask you. What is your assumption on the dollar decline besides the momentum factor? Will the Fed drain cash? Will the Fed raise rates? Will the Fed move to an exit strategy? And I guess, heaven forbid, Neil, will we ever stop this explosive borrowing coming out of Washington? Well, I don't see any end in sight to the explosive borrowing. We're on a $9 trillion cumulative deficit uh, over the 10-year the uh, time frame. And right now, I, I think it's way too early to talk about uh, exit strategies for the Fed. I, I don't buy the idea that this is a V-shape or even a W. I think it could be a flat line given the uh, condition of the U.S. consumer. So I don't really see any reason why the, the two combined uh, forces at work here, a huge deficit plus easy money, are going to go away anytime soon. Meanwhile, You've got to remember that one of the biggest buyers of U.S. dollars in recent years has been the People's Republic of China. Mm -hmm. At one time, they were buying three quarters of all new issuance uh, by the U.S. Treasury of bonds. That's over now because the Chinese have got a different strategy. There probably won't be a Chinese trade surplus next wow. year. The Chinese are not going to buy dollars. They are out of this game, and that's another reason why I see the dollar heading downwards, and downwards quite fast. J Jim LeCamp, give me a stock market perspective. The, the world is waiting for Dow to 10,000. Mm -hmm. And I think Brian's positive economic scenario is definitely, definitely in play. We're waiting for the earnings. They've come out pretty good so far. How do you see this? You've heard Neil. You've heard Brian. What's happening to the stock market? Well, the stock market right now is moving because of liquidity. And if the, stead, if the Fed starts removing m uh, money from the punch bowl, then we're, we're going to have all sorts of problems with the stock market from that perspective. Furthermore, what's, what's really cushioned the dollar's blow, why it hasn't fallen off a cliff yet, is because interest rates have remained low. If we start to see interest rates decouple from the dollar and start to go up without the dollar improving, and I think more people think there's going to be more stimulus and more pressure on the dollar than any positive moves from the Fed, then this all plays out negatively for if, the stock market. Let us take for a moment. I, if Neil is nearly right, and the, let's just say I don't even need 30 percent. Let's say the dollar keeps dripping and driving lower. Right. Doesn't that at some point force the Fed's hand, force the Treasury's hand, regardless, regardless of the shape of the economy or whatever? I mean, they can't. Right. Look, we are the world reserve currency. That is a very important thing. Yep. And these guys, I don't care how absurd they are down there. They've got to be cognizant. That. They're going to hear it. There's currency right. market vigilantes but they that don't could have a force lot of them choices. into an exit strategy. They right. don't have a, good, a lot of good choices. If they start doing that, what are they going to do? Stop buying mortgage bonds and stop buying treasuries what and then interest think? rates what do you go think, away? We've, we've already heard. Uh, uh, Chairman Bernanke and Don Cohn, Vice Chairman Cohn, come out and make noises about, you know, inflation, potential Fed rate hikes. They're trying. They they hear this, so they're going to try a little bit at a time. I think they have going to try more and more. What would be wrong? More and more. I, you know, you say they're trying. I hate words. I love action. Oh, I do too. Okay. You have to walk your so walk. walk. You Fed can't just talk. The right. Talk. The Fed funds rate is at 15 basis points or whatever. Right. Yeah. So raise it. To 40 basis right. points. Is yep. that going to bring down the American economy? No, absolutely not. I mean, not. what the heck? They should do that. They need to walk the walk. They can't just talk the talk. But, you know, to go back to, to what Neil was saying, China doesn't buy our bonds because they, they want to. They, we buy stuff from them, and then they have to reinvest it back in us. If we don't buy stuff from them, then the dollars never go there. They don't have to buy anything. Neil, do so we have to wait around for this bad scenario? Why can't Washington take some decent actions for a change? Curbs on spending, curbs on debt. Let the Treasury buy some dollars in the open market. Let the Fed make some teeny tiny exit strategy moves, Neil. Why not? I think they're too scared that this economy could go dipping downwards again, and I think they have good reason to be. They also know there's no inflation risk. You know, they can let the dollar go down another 20% oh. or more with very little inflation Whoa, risk. Do you and really believe that, Brian? Yeah, Wait, well, Brian, uh, you have a point. Yeah, I think that's yeah, the key point. A 30% drop in the dollar? Think, isn't that going to explode the drop in the commodities? And the rise in the gold is inflation uh. by definition. And so 
This idea that there's no inflation and the, and the consumer's gone, I just don't, I don't believe either one of those. Well, Jim, Wait a second. 2008, man, we, I've got to get out of here. But 2008, the dollar hemorrhaged again. Oil prices went up. Food prices went up. Every darn thing went up. Before you knew it, the CPI was 6%. Once you get and stocks got crushed again. Once you get Gosh. expenditures <laughs> versus deficits to where they are now, you're going to see inflation, and that, that uh, is a major I risk that go. we have. The producers are screaming. We need more work <laughs> on this. Neil Ferguson, you're terrific for coming on. I hope to see you soon. Ryan Westbury, Jim LeCamp. This All is right. very interesting. I'm telling you, it's a foot race. Rising profits, lower dollar. 